In this video, I'm doing a commentary on a match between Anthony Niakiani and Frank Frigo. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. Thank you to Frank Frigo and Michael Pines from the San Diego Backgammon Club for allowing me to use this video in the commentary. My book, Backgammon Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. This is the rubber match in the finals of the 2024 Player of the Year between Anthony Nia Kiani and Frank Frigo in the San Diego Backgammon Club. They're doing an outstanding job by growing their club. I've spoken with Michael and Frank, and they are just fantastic there. They set an example. So there was a first match, uh, which Frank already won, and Frank came in from the one-loss bracket, and Anthony the undefeated bracket. So now they both have one loss, so this is the rubber match. It is a nine-point match. They're playing on Frank's beautiful talkie board, seeing, seeing on the main portion of the screen the names of the players and their pip count and score are above and below. There was no player cam, but uh, I have the uh, images of the players to the right above and below the dice are enlarged on the right side the clock is seen in the main frame uh, it's visible and the XG feed is on the lower left and my camera is on the upper left so here we go I'm not familiar with Anthony but Frank Frigo is a two-time world champion outstanding player and I'm sure Anthony is an outstanding player as well, given that he's made it to the finals. So Anthony opens the first game uh, with a 6-2. This is a nine-point match. Now with the 6-5, the correct reply to a 6-2 is hitting twice, not running the back checkers. 5-2. Comes in and brings one down. Now double two for Frank. So what can he do? He can hit and continue and make the ace point, making a two point board. He can also make the bar point. So that's that's for sure. He's going to go all the way, and the best he can do with the rest of it is to split his back checkers. That's what he does. Now Anthony rolls a 6-3 from the bar. Anthony's playing the white checkers at the top. Frank, the black marble checkers at the bottom. Frank's looking for a 4-2. They are playing with the baffle box on the left. Not seen, but you can tell whose roll it is by the location of the dice on the right side. So he hits with the 4, and he advances. Looks like he could have made the anchor, which was a little better. Now 4-1 from the bar. He comes in and hits loose. Frank's looking for a 5. He gets it. He gets a 3-2. He comes in and hits. It's an early hitting exchange. These are very common. 6-4. So he comes in with the 4, and he's going to hit loose on the 5 point. 4-2 for Frank. Now he comes in with the 2 and hits back with the 4. Now Anthony's on the bar. 6-3 comes in with the 3 and hits on Frank's 9 point. Back and forth. Now a double 1. He can't hit. He's going to come in. He's got to make his 5 point with 2 of them. But that will leave his 6 points stripped. He doesn't need an anchor right now. He can just advance 23 to 22. That's what he does. Now 4-1 for Anthony. He'd like to have made the 10 point or 11 point, but this is the best he can do. Put two in the air. Now Frank is looking. Not quite a double yet. He rolls a 5-3 from the bar. Comes in with both checkers. Double two for Anthony. So what can he do? He can make the four point, but then there's nothing else productive. That 
13 to 9 twice is actually pretty productive. Produces a good blocking point, brings extra checkers into the zone. So 5-4 for Frank. What can he do? He can hit with the 4, and then with the 5, probably just come out. That's what he does. Nice play. Now Anthony's on the bar. 4-3. So he can come in with the 4 and hit loose on his 10 point. He is outboarded 3-1. to one. You need to be careful of getting into an early hitting exchange when you have a weaker board. He does make that play. Frank's looking to possibly double from the bar. It's not a double, but not that far. A lot of people are afraid to double from the bar, but he can hit with any ace, as well as double 5 and 6-4. 6-3, he cannot. So he comes in with the 3. And he can hit with the 6 there. Putting another checker on the bar. Now there are 9 dancing numbers for Anthony. That was one of them, unfortunately. Double 1. Okay, so now Frank has a doubling decision. He's up by 29 in the race. He's a 3-point board. 3 checkers back to 4. He has a blot on his board, but Anthony has 1, 2, 3 blots and one in the air. This is a borderline pass. Black is winning 65% of the time with 39% gamut. He does take. Frank's looking to attack 4-1. So he can. He's going to hit <clears throat> with the 1. And with the 4, he's just going to play off the anchor. 3-2. Good roll. He comes in with both. Hits a checker. However, Frank can hit back with a, with a 1 from the bar. He doesn't get it, but he gets a 6-4. He's able to come in with a 4. That's force and hit with a 6. Now Anthony's on the bar. He dances with a 6-5. When you cannot come in, it's called dancing or fanning or flunking. Now 3-2 for Frank. What can he do? Nothing too productive. He can hit loose. That'll put a second checker on the bar. That'll really prevent Anthony from making a second anchor. That would be really strong. However, there's not enough checkers in the zone. Better to just make a blocking point by making the 9 point. It just leaves too many blots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 blots all over the place. So, now Anthony has two checkers on the bar. He needs a 4 to hit. No, he needed a 3 to hit. Sorry, he gets the 3. So he hits another checker. 6-5 for Frank. So he comes in with the 5. And looks like he has to continue the attack because he can't consolidate his position enough. He needs that tempo just to prevent being hit. He has way too many blots. 7 blots. That's almost half his army. He's looking at covering. But now Anthony can hit with fours, fives, sixes, ones, twos, threes. Basically any number will hit something. So he needs to do the tempo play. A tempo play is when you hit the opponent's checker just to put him on the bar to produce possible dancing numbers. In this case there would be nine dancing numbers, double six, double five, double one, six five, six one, five one. And to keep the opponent from playing his full role. So he'll, use, he'll have to use half of his roll to come in, barring doubles. And that's what he does. Now Anthony's looking for a 3. He gets it, 3-1. So he comes in and hits with a 3, and he's going to hit another one. And he, he can hit without leaving another blot on his board with 8-7. to seven. Frank's looking for a 1 to hit back. No, 5-2. At least he can make that anchor and brings the second checker in. Now Anthony's looking to hit some more blots. And he rolls a 6-4. He's able to hit two more blots coming off the 23 point. 23 to 17. He's, he's, he can't cover his ace point, although he'd, he'd like to. Now Frank has two on the bar. 5-3 comes in with both. Now Anthony has the initiative. 6-2. So what can he do? Nothing too productive. Go there, make the bar point. Now he's a solid four prime and just advance the back checker. Now, Frank's in some trouble here. 6-2. Not, 
Not a good roll. He's going to have to come out. Yeah, it looks like it was a little better to stay back and come out with the other one. Spread out the checkers in the outfield. Now a 6-1 for Anthony. He's going to come and then continue. 2-1 for Frank. Now he's able to hit. And then he'll probably want to split the back checkers, trying to advance the lower anchor to try, try to possibly escape <clears throat> should he get that opportunity. That's what he does. Now Anthony's on the bar. 5-2. He's forced to come in with the 2. And he can come out all the way or 23 to 17, 22 to 17 like that. Both plays are very close. He's looking at both options. He is about a 3-2 favorite here. 6-2 for Frank. So, he can hit. Looks like it's better to play 22 to 14, but the plays are close. That's interesting. Give up that anchor. That gives him good outfield control. And Anthony's board is weak. And Frank can take advantage of that with his three point board. Additionally, Anthony has a blot on his board. That blot is right next to that nice blue doubling cube. I don't think I've ever seen a doubling cube like that. It's beautiful. He does decide to hit. hit. 3-2. He's going to come in and hit. Frank is very deliberate. That's one of the common things you see with outstanding players like Frank. They take their time. You don't want to miss anything. So he comes in with the 4 and he's going to come, out, come around and make the bar point. Now he has 3 anchors but they're not very useful because they're completely disconnected from the rest of the army. Anthony dances from the bar with a 6-1. Frank's looking to come out. No, 3-1. Bad roll. Can't really move his back checkers. He has to play the 3 on his side, and that's the best way to play it. Now Anthony's on the bar, looking at possibly doubling with 2 on the bar. Turns out to be a small no redouble. Now it's a little bigger one. Plus, plus. 5 4, he comes in with one checker. Frank's looking to escape. Oh no, double four. That's an anti joker. He can't move any of his back checkers. This is what happens with these back games. Now it's too good to double, to redouble. 6 1 brings in one. Frank's going to need to do something. He's able to bring that out with the five. He needed that, and the three is just got a safety. Continuing would leave too many blots and lose too many gammons. Frank uh, Anthony still has a checker on the bar. 4-2, he comes in and anchors up. Now he has a commanding lead here. 5-1. Or was that 5-2? Sorry. 5-2, he advances. Now 6-5. So it looks like the best play is to cover his ace point. That converts the liability into an asset. It's okay because Frank has all his lower board points. He plays 19 to 8. Now 6-5 for Frank. He's probably going to want to play 2 off the 20 point. Otherwise he's going to have to play 1 off the 20 point with 21-18. 20, or 2110. He finds it. 5 2 for Anthony. So if he comes out, he's going to leave blots. Look at that. The best play is the tempo play, the pick and pass. 8 to 3 and continuing to the 1 point. That produces 4 dancing numbers. 
And you'll notice that double six which dances after a possible hit plays really well for uh, Frank. And so does six one. Double one as well. Six one. So now he can come out to the anchor, he can hit. He has a lot of options here. He's looking at it. I had the pleasure of doing an interview with Frank discussing his second world championship in 2023 as well as the San Diego Backgammon Club at the California State Backgammon Championships in December of 2023. That was very interesting. The video is actually on the YouTube channel. You can find that. It turns out they're all about the same because it's a pass no matter what. Now it's a redouble and a pass, but not terribly bad, bad to play on. Anthony's problem is his board. Frank's going to be able to pop out and take control of the outfield. Now a 6-2. He can come out and hit. That's what he does. He's taking advantage of that prime he has, despite the fact that he leaves a blot on the board. 5-3 for Frank. So you can either come in with a 5 or come in with a 3. The other half of the rule is going to be played off the 15 point. Looks like it's a little better to play 15 to 12 and come in with a 5 so he can pop out. All right, 6 1. So now he can make the 5 point on head. That's very strong. Now he has a solid 5 prime. Now he's going to win a lot of gammons. 4 2. So, not a good roll. So, he can come in with the 4 or come in with the 2. He's better off coming in with the 4. And then the 2, he doesn't want to create another blot. So, he'll step into a triple shot. Now, 4-3. That'll hit. And he can continue or play 8-5 to five or play 21-18. to 18. They're all close. Frank's on the bar. He gets a 4-1. Actually not hitting is tied. Virtually tied with coming in on the 21 and playing 2-1. He'll just get stuck and he'll probably be forced to crunch his board. Now 4-2. So he can make the 12 point and just play to 6. Double six. Okay, so he can bring two out and probably two more down. He's got to count the race. So he's down 24 pips before the roll. I'm sorry, 21 pips. So he'll be up by three pips after 24 pips. So that's two, four, six, eight, nine checkers on the 15 point. That's 95 pips there. The problem with this play is it's so inflexible. Everything's going to ha have, have to be played off that 15 point. And he's going to le leave more blots that are going to be hit back. Turns out if he makes this play, it's too good to redouble.
He's thinking. Frank's in a really bad situation. So he's looking at bringing two out and then two down. This is the best play according to XG, in which case he'll have a pass and lose only two points. This is a little better because at least it creates a bad double five for Anthony. And he has a little bit of flexibility. He retains that back anchor. And he has that spare on the 15 point that he can possibly play. The other option would be to uh, play two, continuing two more from the 15 point. All right, that's what he chooses. Anthony redoubles immediately. Turns out it's slightly too good to redouble and a big pass. Four points is a lot. White is winning 76% of the time with 33% gammons. A gammon on a four cube will get him to eight, one away from winning the match. So the, oh, he takes, he's going to regret that, I think, after watching this. <laughs> Anthony puts it back in the middle to take a picture. Three two for Anthony. There he can make. There you go. He makes his four point. Another double six. Wow, that's a great roll. That just made it into a 50 50 game. Now a six two for Anthony. He's just got to play behind. Now Frank has the initiative. He rolls a 6-3. He can play behind in 15 to 12. Anthony's looking for an 8. No, he gets a 4-2. He's just going to cover. Double two, so he can hit loose, but that's not the right idea. Can't move the back checkers on the 15 point, they're blocked. So that kind of narrows things down. These ones are hard when there are no good options. He can play 12 to 4. That produces some dancing numbers, gives Frank a chance to cover and bring things home. Alternatively, he can leave that checker on the 12 point and bring 3 up from the 9 point to the 7 point and then play two to one, uh, 3 to 1 with the final 2. Turns out that's the best play. I always tell people the importance of the away score in a match. Here the match is to 9 points, so the absolute score is 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, but each player needs to get to 9 points, so each player is 9 away from their goal. So the away score is 9 away, 9 away. The reason why that's important is because you're trying to win the match with perfect efficiency. You need 9 points, you want to get 9 points. If you get 10 or 11 or 12, that's too many, that's called overage, that's called wastage. Uh, imagine you're running to score a touchdown in the football field. Once you get to the goal line, that's it. It's a touchdown. You don't need to run an additional 5 yards, 10 yards, 20 yards. That would be wasteful. That would be useless. He finds the right play. Now double four. Okay, so that's a good roll. Two of them. Wow. That was a big swing. And now with the other two... He's going to want to cover his eight point. His eight point. Yeah, there you go. And then 13 9 will duplicate the twos that enter and hit. Frank dances. Anthony's looking for the gammon. He rolls a 5 3. 
Looks like it's better to actually make the board here. That wins more gammons. Double three. Frank dances again. 2-1. He should make the board. And then spread out with 7-6. to six. No, that's the wrong idea. 3-1. He comes in. He's going to play off the 15 point. Anthony dances with a 3-2. So now, Anthony has a solid 6 prime. Frank cannot escape his back checker. He's looking to fish for another checker. Trying to hit another checker. Send another checker back. Close him out. And win a double gammon on a 4 cube. So now 4-1. He doesn't really want to hit, but what are the alternatives? He's got to play 15 to 11. Five two for Anthony he brings in one checker. Frank's trying to avoid losing a gammon. He can pick and pass and basically safety one checker. That will reduce his gammon losses. Anthony's still on the bar with two. He dances two one. Speaking of two one, Frank rolls a two one. He has to play twelve to ten. There, yeah, twelve to nine. Anthony's still on the bar. 6-3. Comes in with one checker. Frank's just looking to try to save the gammon. 5-3. That's a good roll. He's able to make his four point. That'll, allow, that'll make it harder for Anthony to come in. But it'll safety. Save some gammons. 6-1. Okay. So it comes in with the six and he has to play seven to six with the one. 3-2. He's going to clear his bar point. That's saving a lot of gammons. 3-1. Okay, so he can hit loose. Now if he hits, he can hit back with a 5. He doesn't. 6-1. So he's forced to come in with a 1. He can't move the 6. 3-2. He's just going to play off the back. 5-1. He's going to safety that 5-4. to four. Double 4. He can cover with 3 of them. And there, he's going to bring another builder. 5-2, he has no 5, only a 2. 6-1, he should hit loose. Oh, it's very bad to have that spare checker there. Would have been much better to hit loose there. 6-1, Frank just plays 2-1. Now 4-3 for Anthony. He's looking at the hit. The hit is correct. Frank dances with a 6-5. Double three for Anthony. I think he's got to close the board. Now 2-1. Plays 8-5. to 5-1. Five. Five, he's not going to win a lot of gammons because uh, Frank has only one checker back. 4-1, he's going to bear one off and play 2-1. 4-3, he'll clear the 6-point. Now Frank can roll. Can't come in. 4-1. 5-2 for Anthony. He's going to clear his 5-point. Now there are two spaces to come in on. Double 2, he dances again. 3-2, he can bear off two checkers. That'll get some more gammons, or he can just be, play safe. If he bears off two checkers, that'll leave a shot next with double threes or higher. 2-1. Frank dances again. 5-4. He bears off two checkers. 3-2. He can't come in again. Double six. Great roll. He bears off four checkers. Frank's going to need to perform soon. Double three. That counts. That's going to save some gammons. 6-5, he bears off two checkers. Frank's going to need a crossover or two, preferably. 6-2, he gets it. 6-3, he only bears off two checkers. So, Frank is able to save the gammon. Anthony gets four points, going to 4-0. Five away, nine away. That's a commanding lead.
On to game two. Two one for Anthony. The red one is Anthony's. The blue one is Frank on the opening roll. He does split. Two one for Frank. He should split and reply. An opening 2-1 when you're ahead in the score like this is slightly better to be played by splitting, but they're very close with the normal play of slotting. Four one's a productive roll for Anthony. He's going to make his bar point. He could have hit twice, but this is a nice productive alternative. 6-2 for Frank. He's just got to play from the back, and he, le he plays from the 23 point to keep that goalkeeper way back as far as possible. Anthony can hit with the three. He gets it. He's going to hit with the three and advance with the two. He should advance the advanced back checker from 23 to 21. Now Frank's on the bar. Double six. What a bad sequence for Frank. Now it's not a double quite yet. But 6-1, he's able to hit another checker. Good roll. 5-4 now comes in with both. Anthony's looking at possibly doubling. He does have a lot of attackers bearing on. He's winning 65% of the time with 22% gammons, but because of the score, he has to play conservatively. He rolls a 6-3. Notice he can hit twice, different ways, but he just has to play safe like this. As the leader in a match, when you have a commanding lead like this, you do have to play conservative. 4-2. So he's got an anchor. And he's going to bring one down. 6-2. Okay, so now he can point on head. Or he can run. But pointing on head is a little bit better, despite the fact that it leaves a blot on the 10 point. Partly because the hitting fives are duplicated to enter. Double five would be really nice here for Frank. Comes in and hits and makes the ace point on head. Doesn't get it. Doesn't have to worry about it. 3-1. Look at that. It's slightly better to come in with the three and slot. 6-5. Interesting. Now 4-1 for Anthony. So he's just going to have to play safe. He's ahead by 35 pips in the race with only one back checker. He has a stronger board. And he's ahead in the score, 5 away, 9 away. Does decide to hit. He doesn't like the goalkeeper there, but that's not the right idea. So Frank comes in with the 2 and hits with the 5. 5-2 five, for Anthony. So his best bet is to actually cover that ace point blot to convert it from a liability to an asset. Now 5-4 for Frank. So what can he do? He can anchor on the 15 point and then find a 4. Like hitting. Twenty to fifteen will anchor, then he can hit with six to two. That has the advantage of putting a checker in the air and unstacking the six point. But it's going to be very dangerous for Frank because he's outboarded. He doesn't want to leave all those blots. All right. 5-3 for Anthony. He can't hit with the two, but he can come in with the five and hit loose. Take advantage of that stronger board. Frank's going to want an anchor. 5-2. So... He can come in and hit, and he doesn't have a good two. He'll have to play 13-11. Now, if Anthony can hit, he's in good shape. He cannot. 6-4. Comes in with the four. He actually can hit with 8-2, to two, which turns out to be the best play. If Frank dances and cooperates, he does not. 5-1, so the five is forced, and the one he can hit 6 to 5, but that'll leave 2 blots. He has to hit 2 to 1. 
Nice play by Frank. 3-2 for Anthony. He's just going to anchor up. 6-5 for Frank. I think he's just going to have to play safe. He can play 13-7 and cover his ace point. That's a little bit of an overplay here. Does play behind. Now 6-4 for Anthony. So, you can't move the checker on the 21 point. You can move that and then play 13-9. Or you can come out. Not as dangerous as it looks because Frank ha has those two blots in his board. And Anthony has a nice four point board. He does come out. Plays are close. 3 1 for Frank. So he could make the five point on head. Anytime you can make the five point, you should highly consider it. However, in this case, because of those two blots, if he does that, that's going to be very dangerous. It's actually best not to hit at all. Play 6 3 and 2 to 1. He does hit. Now Anthony's on, a, on the bar. He has 20 numbers to come in and hit. It's not a double yet. But he rolls a 5-2. He hits with the 2. And with the 5, he can come out with 21-16. to 16. Four three, So he has to come in with the 3. That's forced. He doesn't have a good 4. He's going to have to play 6-2. Which again leaves blots. He's looking at 10 to 6. I wouldn't want to be frank in this situation. Still not a double. But he's considering it. He does have 20 numbers that hit. But now Frank has somewhat of a blockade. So he rolls. He rolls a 6-4. The 4 is forced, and he's just going to have to come down 13-7. to seven. Now a 6-3 for Frank. So what are his options? He can hit and continue with 10-4 to four and continuing to the 1 point. He doesn't want to play off the back. That will just leave more blots, and he already has 2 blots in his board. He can clean up by clearing the 8 point. Which turns out to be best. It makes the makes a three point board without leaving a blot. He can clear the eleven point, but that gives up gives up gives up too much of the blockade. Double four would be I'm sorry, double two would be an anti joker if he keeps that there. If you look at how double two would play for white, if he keeps the 11 point, all those back checkers are blocked. He'll have to play 13 to 7 and leave a blot somewhere. You always want to identify these anti jokers or root numbers. Root numbers are roles that force the opponent to significantly give up some aspect of their structure. He goes back. And he does decide to hit and continue. Anthony's looking to double. It's not a double yet. Even though he's winning a lot of gammons because of the score, you have to be careful. 6-5, he dances.
Now it's 6, 4 for Frank. So what can he do? He can cover. He can come out and hit all the way. Come out all the way and hit with 22 to 12. Or he can cover and then safety one blot. Anthony's on the bar. 5, 1. He dances again. Now Frank has a double. Frank's winning a lot of gammons here. Frank's winning 64% of the time here with 34% gammons. That would tie the match. Anthony doesn't want to give him that opportunity. In general, when you're in an even away score, that's more valuable. So right now, Frank is in an odd away score, 9 away. Uh, so in that sense, Anthony does not want to pass to give him the opportunity to get from 9 away to, to 8 away, which is an even away score. However, the losses, he, he just doesn't win enough to continue this game. He's thinking about it. One of the things that Mochi says, Mochi is the best player in the world, is anytime you have a doubling decision, take at least 12 seconds. We can see the pip counts here, but count the race. You're going to have to do that over the board. Look at the position. Look at what's going on. Think about what's going to happen in the next sequence. What are the market losers? A market loser is a sequence of two rolls which makes it a pass after that sequence, whereas it was a take before. Frank has too many market losing sequences. For example, he can hit with eights except for double two. He can also hit with tens. He can make the four point. He can make the three point. There's a lot of good sequences. So Anthony correctly passes, gives up only a single point. Anthony has a 4-1 lead, five away, eight away. On to the next game. They roll the two dice through the baffle box. 3-2. That's for Frank. He's going to bring two down. Plays aggressive. 4-3. He should bring two down himself. If he's going to do that, he's got to split the back checkers. But you don't really want to split there. Oh, that's that's a bad that's a bad play. Sorry to say that. 4-1, he hits and makes a 10 point. I'm sure Anthony regrets that. 5-4, so he has some options, but the best is to anchor. So he looks, he can hit, he can make his 9 point, but best is to anchor, especially at the score. 5-2, he's just going to safety one blot. 6-3, now he can make his 3 point. He does do that. Frank's looking to escape his back checker. He cannot. It's a 3-1. So, of course, he can't make his 5 point. He doesn't want to make the 7 point because that will strip his 8 point. This is the best play. Six one for Anthony. Nothing productive. He doesn't want to make the bar point because that'll leave a six shot for Frank. He's just gonna have to play safe with thirteen to six. He's hitting loose. I know he does have all those checkers back, but this is the wrong idea, I'm afraid. 3 1, he comes in with the 1 and he can continue with the 3. If you want to learn from good players, look at how they play. He comes in with the force 1 and looks around the board to make sure he doesn't miss anything. 4 1, so he can cover his 8 point. Hitting is a little unproductive because then you're going to have to do that. Leaving a blot on the board and a dilly builder. Okay, so you can hit with the 4 and then where's the 1?
better just to make the blocking point. That's a 4-2. There is a glare, but you can see the dice. So he has to come in with one or the other. He's going to come in with the 2, and he doesn't have a great 4, but he can put a second checker on the bar. He doesn't really want to do it, but he doesn't have a better 4. At least that puts a second checker in the air and unstacks a 6.64. He comes in with one checker. So now Frank has a small double. He missed a small double, but he rolls a 3-2. So what is he going to do? He can't cover his uh, two-point. He can hit another checker, putting two on the bar again with two blots in the board. That's a double tiger play. And then he'll have to just advance the back checker. He finds it. Now 5-1 for Anthony. He comes in with two checkers. Double two for Frank. Okay, finally a good roll. Now he can clean up his mess. He can play to two, six to four, consolidating everything, making a nice three-point board, giving himself a commanding lead in this game. 6-2 for Anthony. He can make the 18 point anchor. He can hit loose. But he doesn't want to do that. Just make the anchor. If he does hit loose, Frank would have a double and it would be a pass. He does make the anchor. Now Frank's looking at doubling anyway. It's a borderline no double. Double six, that was blocked. So one, two, three, four. Looks like it was better to play ten to four with the last one. That's interesting. Six, five is just going to bring two down. Now here Frank's looking to double. Turns out to be a small double here. He has a 45 pip lead in the race. Anthony's board is really bad. He has a three point board. He has two landing spots in his outfield. He's winning more than two thirds of the time and 13% of the time he's winning a gammon. He decides to roll. He rolls a 6-2. He can clear the 10 point nicely. He'd like to keep that as a landing spot for the checkers on the midpoint. But alas, he cannot. Now 2-1. He's able to make his 5 point. Good roll. 6-2 again. An awkward number. He's, he can't play off the midpoint. He's going to have to play the 6 there. Yeah. And he's got a stack. 5 4. He's just going to maintain the contact being so far behind in the race and just break the midpoint, bringing two checkers down. It's actually close to slot the four point. Anthony has a purer board, meaning he has the higher board points made. Now 3 2. That's a productive roll. He can bring one down from his midpoint. That's what you want to do. 4-2 for Anthony. That's a good roll. He makes his four point. Now he has the best four point board. They call that the beast. No, they call that the barrel. Five point board is the beast. 3-1. He makes his ace point. 5-3. He's just got to play on his side. Looks like 8-5 was better. Double five. That's a great roll. So, brings two down, and he can make the three point, but look at this. It's actually better to clear the six point. 
probably has to do with an upcoming double. You're going to have a more efficient double the other way if you clear the six point. Sometimes the checker play is based on upcoming cube action. So now 5-4, it looks like it's a pass no matter what. He's just going to play 2. This is a double and it's a pass. With those 5 checkers on the ace point, the only time Anthony's going to get a shot in the next sequence is if Frank rolls a double six, double five, or double four. Yeah, there's five checkers. There was one stacked up. So that's going to happen three out of 36 times. And then he can hit with threes, two ones, and double one. That's 14 out of 36. 14 times three is what 42 out of 1296 he does take now 5-2 is just gonna play behind five four again for Anthony just gonna bring two down Four three for Frank, another one. Six three for Anthony. He's gonna slot his two point and play ten to seven, giving more covers. Three two. He's gotta play eight to three. Double four. So he's going to go one, two, three, all the way, looks like. One, two, three, and four. Frank's hoping to clear. He can't. He hits with the five, three. The five is forced, and the three is going to play that way. Now Anthony needs a five. No, he dances with a double three. There's still some shot leaving numbers. Double six is some good, some bad. Bears off four checkers, but still leaves a shot. Anthony's looking for a three, and he gets it. Three, one, perfect. He gets that, and he's going to cover his two point. What a big swing. He needs a six, one, or it's lights out. Six, four, he dances. Now he redoubles. It turns out at this score... It's actually not quite a redouble yet. For money, it's a clear redouble. So what? Frank has four checkers off. For money, this is a clear redouble pass. But at this score, if he gives it up, Anthony will be uh, will get six points, so he'll be at three away. So it's still a take. These are really hard. You're going to have to estimate your winning chances here and what happens when you pass. So if you pass, you'll be down three away, eight away. Three away, eight away. Your winning chances are really low. Do you have more than that? Um, or he can take and redouble for the match. Yeah, because he could redouble for the match with perfect efficiency on an eight cube, whereas Anthony gets a lot of overage on the eight cube. He would get 12 points, which is, which is three points of overage. This is what makes match play very difficult. Ah, he's looking to see how many checkers he has off. It's always nice to be able to see how many checkers each player has off. Kit Woolsey has written a book called The Backgammon Encyclopedia. There are two volumes. Can't remember which volume uh, it's in, but he has a lot of reference positions.
for these types of positions. Now you're going to have to estimate your game winning chances and that's a science in of, of itself. These are not huge errors for a doubling decision. If it's less than 0 0.08 or 0 0.05 or something like that, that's not huge for a doubling decision. Turns out the redoubling error is only 40 millipoint. It's a 40 millipoint error, where the, whereas a pass would be a 63 millipoint error. They're both close in terms of the size of the error. He does decide to pass. That's a difficult one. So Anthony gets two more points, six to one. Three away, eight away. On to the next game. Frank's going to have to get aggressive. 6-1, he makes his bar point. 6-5, he can't run. He just brings two checkers down. Now 4-3, he's going to bring two down. He doesn't want to split against uh, 10 in the zone. 6-4, he should split here. Three one for Frank. He's able to hit and make his nine point. Double three, so that's good. He comes in with one. He's going to make the point on head, and he's going to split the back checkers. That helps him make an advanced anchor or possibly escape. Three one for Frank. He can come in with the one. Looks like it was a little better to come in with the one and hit with the three. Five one. He's able to hit two checkers. Frank's going to need something good here. Double two. That qualifies. Comes in with both hits and hits again. Unstacking his four point, making a two point board and a broken five prime. Three two. He comes in with both. Now it's a pass. It's almost too good to double here. In a match, you can win an undoubled gammon. There is no Jacoby rule. The Jacoby rule is used in money play. The Jacoby rule states that you cannot win a gammon nor a backgammon unless the cube has been turned. In a match, that's not the case. There is no Jacoby rule. There is a Crawford rule. The Crawford rule in a match states that when one player gets to one away of winning the match, in this case the match is to nine points, so when one player gets to eight points, there is no doubling for one game. That gives, gives the leader a little bit of a cushion. After that Crawford game, the trailer may double at his first opportunity and usually does so. All right, 2-1 for Frank. Now he slots. It's 6-2, three away, seven away. Now 6-2 for, for Anthony. The standard play is to split here. The reverse split is slightly better here. 4-2. He should make his 5 point, not hit. Yep. Double six for Anthony. That's a good roll. He's going to cover, come around, and then the fourth one just safely play 13 to 7 again. Nice play. 4 3. So, look at that. The best play is the tempo hitting on the ace point. That duplicates the, the aces that are, can be used to make the five point. He does split, it's close. 4-3, good roll for Anthony. He's able to make the point on head. Frank's going to need something good now. Double five would probably be his best. No, he rolls a 5-2. So, 
you can do that and hit. Slightly better to do the other one, come in with the five, because you're unstacking a six point with only four checkers on it. Double one, great roll. One, two, three, and ten to nine. Doesn't really matter. Two one for Frank. Looks like it was better to just slot that point. Anthony doesn't have a cube yet. He rolls a 4 3. So he can make that prime and step up. He doesn't really have much to lose. He's got to do that to make the solid 6 prime. And he's just going to step up. 4-1. So now he has some choices. He can make the point on head. He can come down and make the 9 point and hit to try to counter prime. That's what he does. 3-2 for Anthony. He's going to come in with the 2 and come out with the 3. Or if he comes in with the 3, then that's not a good use of the 2. You see on XG you can analyze all the moves. Plus plus is the strongest non-rollout uh, way of analyzing the position. A rollout is when the computer plays itself many times from that position. That will give you the most accurate result. Double three. Okay, so what can he do with this? He's going to hit there, and he can hit again, and then the best final three looks like it's just a consolidation play. That does bring another builder. Anthony has a double here. Six one, he brings in one checker. Frank needs to perform here. 5-2. So there, and he's going to step up. Anthony's on the bar. He dances with the double five. Now 4-1 for Frank. He's able to make his four point using that spare. Anthony's trying to come in. 5-4, he dances again. 6-2 for Frank. So, he's going to cover. Six-three, great roll. Looks like he had a double there, but that was a great roll. He comes in and out and hits. Six-four for Frank. He dances. Too good to double here. He rolls a four-one. Two-one for Frank. He's able to secure the two-three anchors. That's pretty good for a back game. Now he has a big double. He decides to roll. Another 2-1. He's just out of timing. Now he's too good. So he rolls a 6-3. This comes out and you can play 8-5 or continue to the 13 point. Does play it to 5. 5-2 five, for Frank. He's going to clear his 7 point. 3-1. Look at that. It was right to give him a 6 to come out. 5-2. Okay. 6-1. 5-4. That's forced. So now he's going to have some awkward numbers. 5-4. So look at that. It was better to leave that shot. 
Double three is uh, essentially forced. Now fives are going to be forced. This is where it starts to get awkward, but Frank may crack even further. He doesn't with a double five. Double five for Anthony. That's completely forced. So fives and sixes become forced when the eight point is the highest point to clear against a two three back game. Six five is completely forced. He has to run. Six five. Again, that's also completely forced. That's an anti joker. It leaves a shot, leaves three blots. So he can hit with threes, two one, six one, six two. 6 5, double 6, 6 5. He comes in and hits. Anthony is gracious enough to pick up the checker for him. 3 1. He comes in with the 3 and he has to hit something. He can't afford to cover. That'll just give Frank the initiative. He does hit three to two. Frank can hit with a two. Five three. He can hit the other way. Now five one for Anthony. Comes in with the five and he'll just continue. Frank's looking to hit more checkers. Five four. He can do that. Hit with the five. And just continue to safety. 5-3. He's going to come in and cover his blot there. Now there's going to be a fight in the outfield. 6-5. He can make that 12 point. 5-4. He's going to have to run something and it's going to be from the 20 points. Leaves a direct 5 shot. Or 9s. That's the four. Now that's the five. In that case, the four will have to be off the 20 because he doesn't want to break a six point. All right. Frank's looking for a five. No, he gets a six three. He can hit loose, but he'll be hitting against the four point board with only a three point board. So he has to play safe, come around, leaving only indirect seven, six numbers to hit. No, 5-4. He can't safety that back checker all the way. He'll just safety that one. Double one for Frank. So those two are clear now. So he can either cover the... Yeah, he could do that. Looks like it was better to play 12-10. to 10. Block 6-4. Oh, double six. That's a great roll. That's a joker. 5-1. So now it's a double and a big pass despite the score. <laughs> Frank just gives up. All right. So Anthony gets to seven. Two away. Two away, seven away. That's a commanding lead in a nine-point match. After a short break, the players resume. 5-2 for Frank. He's behind. He's going to get aggressive. 6-2 for Anthony. Best play is just a split. He does slot his 5 point. Five three for Frank. He's able to make an additional point inside. 6-4. That's good. He can hit. He does. Frank's looking for a 5. He gets it. 3-2. He's able to hit. Now Anthony's on the bar against a 2-point board. 5-4. That's a good roll. He's able to anchor. That's great when you're leading. Reduces the gammon losses. Now with the 4-3. He's going to anchor and bring one down. 
Six three for Anthony. So he can safety, and then probably better off unstacking the six point. But he does leave a blot in front of the stripped point, which is reasonable. Three one. He's able to make his bar point. Double three. Okay, so what is he going to do? Two. And then make the ten point. And look for the final one. What is he going to do? He can bring down three and then he doesn't have one. He can make a seven point, but then he has an odd one. So that's the third one, and that's his best bet. It's actually tied with just bringing two down because of how awkward that spare is. 6-1 for Frank. So he doesn't want to give up his midpoint. He's just going to break the 8-point. Another double 3. So... He can make his bar point and then continue to make a 3-point board, but it's better to just keep that blockade. He can also bring two out there. A couple of interesting consecutive double threes for Anthony. He does decide to make the four point, gets a three point board. Now 6 5 is able to run one back checker. 2 1 for Anthony. So he plays the two there. He should actually slot the three point. That's a 2 1 for Frank. Another double for Anthony. He's getting some challenging doubles to play. So two there. And then I think he'll have to play two out. Frank has two blots in his board, so he'll need a two, a double two or a two one or something like that. He doesn't get it. Five four. He's just gonna cover with thirteen to four. Six three for Anthony. Just wanna want a safety. I know he wants to clear that point. He's ahead in the race by 12 pips. With an additional 9, he'll be up 21 pips. So if he goes from 16 to 7, might be able to run away. Okay, that's what he does. Frank's looking to hit with a 4. He gets it. He gets a 3-1. Frank's lo Anthony's looking for a four. No, double three. He dances. Oh, no, he does come in. He was, he was looking for a three. Sorry, it was a little hard to see those. So double three, one, and then two, three, four. Sometimes it's hard to see when the board is at an angle like that on the camera. Two, three, making his ace point. So he clears a nine point. Four three, Frank dances. Not a double yet. Six two, that's a good roll. He hits and he can continue. Oh no, that was five three, sorry for um, Anthony. Now Frank rolls a six two, sorry. He comes in with the two and with the six. He plays down. Now 2 1 for Anthony. He's going to play down and then he can continue 14 to 13. Three, two. So he can advance and play the two in. Now Anthony's up by a mile. So despite the score, Anthony has a strong double, um, almost too good to double, and it's a very big pass. 
Of course, if Frank takes it, he would automatically redouble to four. He's not going to win a lot of gammons here, so he could, the best he can do is get to six. So he would be trailing three away, two away. If he passes, it goes to the Crawford game, and he does. So, one away, seven away Crawford, eight to two in favor of Anthony. Anthony is looking to finish it off and win the San Diego Championships for 2024. They play that in the beginning of 24, so it's for all the points that you've accumulated in 2023. Five two, he brings two down. Five two. He splits. Now with a six two, he's going to make his eleven point and split the back checkers. Double five. That's a great roll. He's going to blitz him. Now they're nine dancing numbers. Double one is one of them. Now Anthony's looking to hit. 2-1. He's able to do that, and he's going to bring another checker into the zone. Now he's trying for the blitz. 5-3. Five, five, Frank comes in with one checker, but on the point that Anthony wants to make next, and he does that with a 6-1. Now Anthony has a four-point board. Commanding position. 3-1 to one favorite to win. Frank dances again with a double five. Now 5-2. Five, he's just going to bring more wood into the zone. 4-3. He comes in with one checker. Anthony wants to attack. 5-1, he cannot. His best bet is to go from the 22 to the 16 because that will give him a double 6 to be able to hit. Or he can bring another one down. 13-7, to seven. that brings another checker into the zone. Frank wants a 4. No, he dances again with a 6-3. Anthony's looking to continue the attack. Double 1, that's a good roll. He can shift. He's got to move those two. Okay. Yep, move the two. And now you can play two up from there. Ones and threes are good to make his five point, but they're blocked from the other point, so that's good. Five three comes in with one checker. Double five, so he can come around and hit. And he'll want to bring one down. He can't bring he can't move his back checker. Frank's looking for a five. ASAP as possible. He gets a five and a two. Comes in with both checkers. Five, three from the bar. He comes in and he can come in with a five and hit loose with a three or come in with a three and hit loose with a five. It's better to come in with a five and hit loose with a three because you're hitting off the point you want to make more. Frank needs a five again. No, he dances with a six, three. Anthony's a big favorite. 4-3. Oh, it's better to actually make the point on head. Frank's looking for a 2. No, he gets a 5-3. Anthony wants to cover with the 5. He doesn't get it. He gets a 4-3. Four, 4 he's going to anchor, and 3 is going to spread out his builders. Frank's looking for a 2 next. Oh yeah, he doesn't need he doesn't need the anchor. He can just come out. Frank dances with a six one. Needs a five or a two. No, he gets a six three. Yeah. Frank needs a two. No, a three one. Looking for the closeout. Five one. He gets it. And then he doesn't really want to move twenty four to twenty three. Doesn't make a difference. 6 2. Barring a miracle, Anthony's going to take this victory. 5 2. He's just going to play safe. Double 6. Bears off. Four checkers. Frank wants to dance here. 6 2. He comes in with one. 5 4. Bears off two checkers. 
Double six. Frank concedes. Congratulations to Anthony, winner of the San Diego Club Championships. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video between Anthony Niakiani and Frank Frigo. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. A special thank you to Michael Pines and Frank Frigo of the San Diego Backgammon Club for allowing me to use this video in the commentary. Again, my book Backgammon Backgame Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. I look forward to seeing everyone in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.